Some advice from an experienced traveler when traveling throughout the world before you do anything else, you should determine the purpose of your trip. For example, it's a great idea to go to Paris to propose to someone. No one can turn you down there. I've personally checked three times. Or take Milan. People often travel there to refresh their wardrobes. Germany or the Czech Republic are great places to go to drink beer and eat roast shank and those, oh, what are they called? Sausages, yes. New York is the perfect place to buy a new smartphone and walk along Broadway. But this city, guys, is visited by tourists from all over the world to feel freedom. It was here that locals came up with the idea of not putting curtains in their windows as if to demonstrate that they have nothing to hide. It's here that cyclists ride around the city all year long, breaking all conceivable and inconceivable laws of physics. It's here that the concept of live and let live is followed by the locals as the main principle for their way of life. Without that, in my opinion, real freedom is impossible. I, Alexander Priyanikov, and the program World Market invite you to Amsterdam, the best city on Earth. Though there's much more water than Earth here, my friends. It's no wonder the locals joke that God created the Earth and the Dutch created Holland. You may laugh, but over 40% of the country's territory is below sea level. Huge areas of land were reclaimed from the sea by hardworking local people. Such is the case when it comes to their capital. Amsterdam began as a small fishing village on the banks of the Amstel River. In the middle of the 13th century, they built a dam here. In Dutch, dam is dam, by the way. Soon the settlement became a city, which they called Amsteldam. And well, sometime after that, some speech therapists appeared, and thanks to them, the locals finally learned how to pronounce the letter R properly and started to call the city what it's called to this day. You can get around Amsterdam a number of different ways. You can always walk. That's if you are a world champion in competitive long-distance walking. It's best to bear in mind that Amsterdam might not seem like a very big city, but it's not a very small one either. You can ride around on a bike, but it's important to note here that the locals don't really like tourists riding bicycles because they get in everyone's way, thus brazenly violating the principle live and let live. Driving is not an option here at all because motorists are treated even worse than cyclists in Amsterdam. Of course, there is a well-developed public transport system here if you haven't gotten fed up with using such means in your homeland. But I still think that the best way to travel around Amsterdam is by boat through the canals of the city. Because first of all, the best view of the city is to be found from the water, where you can look at the local architecture from the bottom up. Secondly, you can get to any point in the city without any risk of getting stuck in a traffic jam or getting crushed by cyclists. Deep in their souls, modern Dutch people are the same type of merchants that their ancestors were and they were the founders of the legendary Dutch East India Company, a giant trading empire that existed for nearly two centuries, from the early 17th to the end of the 18th century. A couple of centuries of trade domination on the planet was enough to convince the Dutch that everything in the world hinges on trade. So it's no surprise that one of the best markets in Europe is not somewhere in Paris, but here in Amsterdam. I'll be honest, this isn't the first time I've been to Amsterdam, or the 10th for that matter, but to my great embarrassment, I've never made it to these places. Because like most travelers who come here, I've always limited my visits to the area in and around Dam Square because, to be honest, it has everything that you need. Well, you understand, that's what I thought. And now I know for sure that if you leave the beaten path of Dam Square, the Van Gogh Museum, Rijs Museum, the Anne Frank House Museum, and find Albert Kuyp Street. Hello to my colleagues, you'll immediately find yourself in the largest market in Amsterdam. And now to the main event. The Dutch, as you know, are great inventors. They came up with the first stock exchange, telescopes, submarines, and speed cameras, which can now be found in abundance on the world's roads. And this is one of their inventions too. They also came up with the wildest and best reality TV shows. But when it comes to the culinary arts, the residents of the Netherlands don't really have anything to boast about, truth be told. The Dutch are much better artists than cooks, meaning they can draw food much better than they can prepare it. 
the Netherlands, in fact, gave the rest of the world only three dishes, and today I'll show you and tell you all about each of them. Let's get started with the first of the three. Unsurprisingly, Amsterdam is full of fish. Don't forget, my friends, that Amsterdam as a city started as a fish market and the North Sea is nearby, rich with fishing traditions. So what did you expect? Plus, given that Amsterdam is now a major transportation hub, they bring in seafood from all over the world in addition to the fish they catch here. Here it is. Look, Golden Dorado from the Mediterranean. What else can we find here? Hake from the North Sea, salmon, tuna, and snapper, which we also saw in Malaysia. It comes from the Asian seas, but we haven't come here for this beauty. The fish we've come here for is much smaller, simpler, and cheaper. But despite its size and simplicity, it is this fish in particular that is the main symbol of Amsterdam. So my friends, it is time for this episode's edition of World Market Dictionary. Today's letter is H, and here H is for herring. I should say soused raw herring. True connoisseurs argue that you can't find herring this delicious anywhere else in the world. The herring season begins in May in Amsterdam and lasts two months. During this period, the whole city is packed with kiosks bearing the signs Holland's New Herring or Young Dutch Herring. You can also find it and give it a try in any restaurant, but there it will cost you as much as oysters. Or you can buy it in supermarkets if you like impersonal, confined spaces but the best option is to go to the Alfred Cape Market. And now it's time to talk about the second product that's made the Kingdom of the Netherlands famous around the world. I hope the French will forgive me, I'm talking about cheese. There are many proverbs and sayings about cheese in Holland. There's, he'll never allow anyone to eat his cheese. They say this when referring to a person who can stand up for themselves. Or, for him, it's like cheese. That's used when a person finally gets what they've been dreaming of. The average Dutchman eats 37.5 pounds of cheese a year. If you were to multiply that by the country's population of 16 million people, you'd be left with a very impressive figure. Holland produces 1,433 million pounds of cheese annually, and Gouda cheese makes up a substantial percentage of the total production. By the way, that cheese was named Gouda, honoring a small town located in the south of the country, where it's been made according to a special recipe since as early as the 14th century. Every market smells different. Balkan markets, for example, are fragrant with the scent of fresh paprika. Asian ones smell of exotic fruits. Scandinavian markets are filled with the scent of shrimp and other seafood. And the main market in Amsterdam has its own specific smell too. It took me quite a bit of time to find the source of the smell. Cheese, herring, and stroopwafel are all good, of course, but we are in Amsterdam after all. In Amsterdam, mmm. And it's time, guys, to show you the place that no one else will show you. 100% exclusive. It's here in the Albert Kuype Market that there is a store that sells the best herbs and powders in the world. Is it clean? Nothing cleaner. 100%? 100%. Perfect. From Colombia? No, from Côte d'Ivoire. The Ivory Coast? Wow, how much is it? It costs $28. For 0.04 ounces? That's so cheap! For the whole package. It's Amsterdam. A rare thing, by the way, my friends. Sugar powder with the world's best vanilla that comes from the Ivory Coast something you won't find easily. This store, by the way, sells lots of other things too. If you can read Dutch, you'll understand this yourself. If not, take my word for it, guys. It says that there are 350 varieties of spices and herbs sold in this store from all around the world, and it's all in alphabetical order. That is, sellers literally swear that if you can't find something here, it means that it is simply doesn't exist in nature. This store also sells a local delicacy, which everyone here enjoys. Here it is. These are licorice candies. I'm getting ready to buy them now. Now, these are not ordinary candies made from licorice, but these candies are made from salted licorice. And not just salted, but from twice salted licorice. 
In my opinion, this is the most unappetizing candy in the world. I have a friend who likes to travel to exotic countries where, you know where there are little villages and children usually chase you begging for coins and candy? So he carries these things with him and gives them to local children, after which they leave him alone forever. $1.90. Lord, how can you eat it with your own free will? I don't understand. You know, my friends, I feel like I've just chewed on, Lord, my grandmother's handkerchief. Actually, it's it's really, it, in principle, it's the ideal treat if you're a masochist deep down inside. Ugh, that's enough. I can't eat this anymore. Excuse me. Oh, Lord. And now I have some good news. There's more to try than herring, cheese, stroopwafels, and the most unappetizing candy in the world in the Albert Kuyp market. Right in the middle of the market is one of the best markets in Amsterdam. It's called Bazaar. Well, what else would you call a restaurant in a market? It's located, by the way, in what is a former church. Very much the Dutch way, you know. And the restaurant Bazaar is a real temple of delicious and healthy market food. Have you ever seen a Dutch cuisine restaurant anywhere? I, for one, haven't, despite all of my experience. It seems to me that it's easier to find North Korean restaurants throughout the world than Dutch restaurants. Not to mention the Chinese, Spanish, Italian, and French cuisine that everyone is already bored with. This is because, historically, the Dutch are very stingy people, guys. They do their best to save time and money, and that's why they argue quite reasonably. Why should I eat my national cuisine in a restaurant when I can eat it at home? So if they go to a restaurant, which usually happens about once a week, they want to get the most bang for their buck. In other words, they want to be surprised, and that's exactly why the main restaurant in the main market of Amsterdam will serve you whatever kind of cuisine you like. Lebanese, Turkish, Indian. Here, look, here's a mez, a selection of vegetables cut into small pieces with garlic, yogurt, carrots, eggplant. Well, this is falafel. We've already seen that many times on our program. Pancakes with some cottage cheese and vegetable inside. My favorite, kebabs literally dripping with juice. All right, I'm going to eat all of this now. But if you still want to try authentic Dutch cuisine, there's only one way to get it, namely to get acquainted with some Dutchman and beg to be invited over for dinner. Still, I must warn you, it'll be more difficult than for me to cope with all of this magnificence, but I'll do my best, I promise. After having eaten enough to last a lifetime, I can continue our journey around the best market in the Kingdom of the Netherlands with new energy. You should know that the Albert Kite Market sells not only the best products from all over the country and the most prominent edible symbols of the city, here you can also buy non-edible symbols of Amsterdam. If you're not really fond of cyclists, then after visiting Amsterdam, you'll hate them altogether. Here they are everywhere. Not only are they rushing along the roads hoping to crush someone, they have also filled the whole city with their bicycles. There's nowhere I haven't seen bikes and special three-story bicycle parking stations, chained to barges, to historical monuments, cast iron lanterns, and bridge railings. I've even seen a special barge that was lifting bicycles from the bottom of the canals with a special scoop. I've seen bikes everywhere. The only thing that I haven't seen is the place where Amsterdam residents get their bikes in such numbers. Now I see. Having visited the beautiful Albert Kite Market, you can go immediately go right back home. If someone tells you anything like that, I advise you to laugh right in their face, like this, ha 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 Because there is another fascinating market in the main city of the Netherlands, and you really must visit it. To be honest, I, like most real men, am really only interested in flowers one day a year. For Russians, this is on the 8th of March, Women's Day. 
But if you're also interested in flowers for the remaining 364 days, then you're most likely, my friend, a florist. But don't be discouraged. First of all, it's now fashionable. And secondly, in Amsterdam, you'll definitely find something to do because here is the source of energy for all the florists in the world. One of the most famous flower markets, the Blumen Market. They've been selling flowers in Amsterdam since the 17th century, though in the old days merchants sold them from boats going along canals. In 1862, the city authorities built a special building for them, which is located on the Amsterdam Signal Canal, very close to Dam Square. The main product in the Blumen Market is, of course, tulips. And now pay attention, 50 young, fresh, best-in-the-world tulips cost only 10 euros. That's about $11, so 22 cents for one tulip. In many cities in the world, tulips are much more expensive. This simple arithmetic tells us that to be a gallant gentleman in Amsterdam is much cheaper than anywhere else in the world. If you don't want to buy fresh tulips, there's another option. Attention, my friends, rubber tulips. I'm not kidding. This is rubber, just like rubber boots. In my opinion, rubber tulips are the ideal gift for a rubber woman. But if instead your girlfriend is a log, there is an option for you too, wooden tulips. By the way, they're much more expensive than fresh ones. On the other hand, they'll keep forever. In all fairness, it should be noted that in this market, you can also buy any plant, even those from the farthest corners of the planet. Plants of wondrous beauty, but they're sold here mainly as seeds and bulbs. Well, let's look at this package of tulips. Let's read the instruction. First, you need to dig a hole in the earth, 10 centimeters, water it properly, plant the bulbs at a distance of 10 centimeters from each other, wait four to five months, and then they'll grow up 40 or 50 centimeters, and then you can cut them. The most important thing is to not eat them. Well, this option is certainly good if you're retired, but if you are a city dweller like me, who would it take less than 10 minutes to forget where he planted the bulbs in his garden? Dutch engineers have developed a friendlier DIY flower just for you. Here it is. Let's pick, let's pick. A masterpiece of Dutch flower ingenuity, my friends. Inside this can, the bulbs are already in a special biological casing. Let's read the instructions. Open the can, pour water in, put it under sunlight, and voila! Someday, you'll have your own unique, in this case, blue tulip on your windowsill. This is the perfect souvenir to bring from the flower market in Amsterdam. Having bought a can of tulips and spent the whole day in the markets of Amsterdam, it's time to get ready to go home. But before I go to pack my suitcases, I want to talk about the code of conduct in the local markets. Before you listen to the code of conduct for the markets in Amsterdam, let me make a small note. Sometimes it happens that some people who have visit Amsterdam remember very little of their time there. Therefore, the next time you come to the capital of the Netherlands, watch this part of our program again. Clear? Let's get started. Rule number one. If I were to assess the local vendors on a five-point scale, I would give them a six for their artistry, sense of humor, desire to help, and unobtrusiveness. But their main virtue is that though they're unlikely to give you a big discount, when you communicate with them, you don't feel like they are trying to cheat you. Rule number two is about a sense of humor. The locals have somehow managed to convince the whole world that eating herring in much the same way as the sword swallower eats his sword is the very Amsterdamian way to do it. And while naive tourists are trying to master this ridiculous skill, poking herring into their mouths, the local people quietly laugh at them and eat herring like all normal people do with a fork and a knife. And this, by the way, is completely reliable information. It was shared with me by the very man who sold herring to Queen Beatrix herself in the Albert Kite Market. Rule number three, local climate. No one likes it because in the morning it may be minus two and then at lunchtime it may already be plus 20. But the locals have learned to deal with it. Take all the clothes that you have at home and put them on layer by layer and then simply adjust the layers depending on how the temperature changes throughout the day. 
Rule number four, the four most important symbols of Amsterdam are still tulips, herring, cheese, and stroopwafels. They're sold everywhere, in the city center, at the airport, but normal people buy them in the markets, the flower market, the Blumen market, the Albert Kuyp market, both of which we visited today. At this very moment, millions of people are buying and selling something, somewhere, which means I must go there. My name's Alexander Priyanikov, and this was World Market. Good luck in all your dealings.